Hi guys, pair of talking hands back at it again and today I'll show you how to invent and draw your very own poses from scratch without copying. Like I said. In case you're still a bit insecure about your drawings and your poses, I already uploaded a basic video on how to draw poses from reference. It basically shows you how you can draw any pose out there. But then all of you guys wanted me to make a video about how to draw poses from imagination. How do you invent a whole new pose without copying anything? So today I will show you multiple ways on how to invent a new pose. How I personally invent poses, how to turn a bad pose into a good pose and at the very end of this video you and I will invent a pose together. So stick around till the very end of this video if you want to draw along. It's gonna be a step by step tutorial. As you can see this tutorial is packed. I spent a lot of time making this video, adding effects and animations and 3D models and that's why today's video is gonna be sponsored again. Cause Speaking of animations and effects, Skillshare has thousands of classes and members. And yes, that includes animation, video editing and anything you can think of. And, you know, you can tell I'm obviously not a native English speaker myself. I prefer watching tutorials in my language, which is DEUTSCH! So if you are like me and you speak another language, don't worry because Skillshare started to translate their courses. So all of them are now subtitled in Spanish, French, Portuguese and... Yes, also, Deutsch! they even have, and that's my highlight, a class from Kurzgesagt called Motion Graphics with Kurzgesagt. Kurzgesagt are a huge role model to me. They basically invented this simplistic animation style you see everywhere now. I've watched their videos back when they were only available in German and they have like a complete course on how to animate just like them on Skillshare. The course has excellent ratings and I mean just Look at that, that's so much stuff to learn from. But there are also classes, for example, on how to become a freelancer and earn money with your art and many more cool classes. And as a little extra, the first 1000 people to click the link in the description will receive an entire month of Skillshare for free. Thank you so much for sitting through this ad and thank you Skillshare for sponsoring me. And now let's go ahead and invent some new poses. So let's start from scratch, without any hints or guides. I can think of two quick ways on how to come up with new poses. Now let's start with the easy one. I'll go ahead and call this method the dynamic line method. You basically start out with two curved lines. Now this method requires some of your imagination because this, uh, this is it. Th that's the whole pose right there. The vertical line basically represents your torso while the horizontal line marks your shoulders. All you have to do here is to add a torso and a head to the vertical line and to add some shoulders and arms to the horizontal line. I know, this sounds way too easy. You could almost say a little sus, but look, that's how you actually invent poses. Drawing these two dynamic lines at first and then using this barebone skeleton to add a head, a torso and arms. And yeah, of course you clicked this video because you wanted to draw something like that and not some glorified stickman. But this really is the base of it all. By adding legs in the same manner you already have a very, very basic idea of a pose. Now you only need to use this so called thumbnail sketch as a reference for yourself to make a more detailed version of it. So you basically made yourself your own reference without copying anything. And if you're now like, dude what? I cannot draw that, how am I supposed to learn how to draw bodies like that? Oh, yeah, I'm teaching you how to draw poses here. How to draw decent human anatomy is something I already made tutorials about. Cause it's true, you can't draw a human pose if you can't draw a human in the first place. You need to know about the basics of how to construct a human first. And right after that I can add details like muscles for example. And this is pretty much it, that's a neat beginner's way to come up with new poses. And believe it or not, but this method actually worked so good while recording this video, I came up with some cool poses myself. I guess I'll be finishing these artworks very soon, once I have the time for it. Just check out my social media, I mostly upload my art there once I'm done with it. Now, this was the dynamic line method. Well actually, for my more complicated poses, I like to use a different method. Maybe you already heard of something called life drawing. I like to do that a lot, just so I don't get rusty and the point of this practice is to get the shape of something down just by scribbling a silhouette. 
And with this method, I actually draw my more complicated poses. And because it's a more complicated method, it's also a lot more complicated to explain as well. But I'll be trying my best. While scribbling, I try etching out the pose. Imagine carving something out of wood. You first want to have a somewhat fitting silhouette, and from that you get more, more detail. I'm not making this up, by the way. That's actually how this is done with carving wood. And while watching these videos, I thought, hey, why don't I just try sketching like that too? So yeah, you basically start scribbling with no idea in mind at all, and the idea comes while you're drawing. While sketching, I'm like, yeah, the legs could go somewhat there, I think. And then I adjust, and I adjust more and more, until I get something I am happy with. And when I'm not, well, I just scribbled something different. This just takes a couple of minutes at most, so who cares if it didn't end up looking good? This is basically brainstorming in the most physical way there is. Maybe I'm biased because I'm practicing life drawing for like a year now, I'm kinda used to this, but this genuinely helped me when I have no idea what to draw or if I have trouble coming up with a certain pose. And yeah, I know, this method seems pretty sus as well, after all this method looks like, well, crime scene basically, but believe me, we're not done here yet. Because right after that you can lightly erase over your sketch and then you can get more detailed right after that. And the rest works pretty much just like it did before. Also, this goes without saying, but my digital artist brethren can also use this exact same method just by reducing opacity on the initial layer and then draw over that. All of this works pretty much in any medium. Now maybe you saw all of this, tried it out for yourself and then you thought well, all of this looked a lot easier than it actually is. First of all, you just need practice to get better at art. That's a fact. And after all, there's this rule that says you're only really good at something after you've practiced it for 10,000 hours. Now, I'm not sure if I agree to that, though. I mean, 10,000 hours? That's the equivalent of 416 days. That's the time it would take to... I don't know, beat one boss in Elden Ring. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, life drawing makes you a thousand times better at this, so this practice can help a ton even if you just try practicing this for an hour or two. But you don't want to hear that. <laughs> okay, so let's take a look how we can turn this T-pose looking mother fricker into a real chad. First thing to check is, are your lines dynamic enough? The very basis of your drawing consists of straight lines, so of course your character looks stiff. Try drawing these with some momentum, just like you saw me doing it before. Also, always keep in mind that your head, the ribcage and the pelvis can be rotated. Again, sounds incidental, but this makes a huge difference. The last thing you can always use to spice up your art is for shortening. And this is kinda hard to explain, but by overlapping the limbs of your drawing, the perspective of your art looks less flat and more 3D. This is not easy at all, especially at the beginning. Believe me, I know that, but if you want to know more about this whole foreshortening topic, you can check out my tutorial on it. There are a couple of exercises that can help you practice this. There are also things like negative space and composition, which can help you out to spread the weight of your art into a specific direction, but I think that might be a topic for another video. But enough of that, I promised you there's gonna be a draw along part where you and I are going to invent a pose together. And believe me, I keep my promises. Any means necessary. So let's try to generate a random phrase, like this for example. A person is jumping forward. Easy enough, right? Now a total beginner would try and go about it like that. But as you just learned, that's not really the productive way of drawing things. So let's draw this together. Let's make a really dynamic pose. So let's make sure these lines are not straight, but rather curved. Now there are hundreds of ways to interpret these lines, but I'm just gonna go ahead and draw in some human building blocks just the way I want them to look. The legs and feet are going to be in the air since, uh, well, we said we're gonna draw someone jumping. Remember, if your pose looks too boring, you can always spice it up with some foreshortening. So let's draw one hand that's coming closer to us while the other one goes backward. And while we're at it, let's do the same thing for the legs.
Don't forget you can rotate your head or your ribcage. This makes your artwork look a lot more dynamic. Now this is basically the final pose. Let's just correct some proportions so that the anatomy won't be completely off. Now you can use this to draw a big version if you want to, I'll just complete the smaller version for simplicity's sake. So yeah, fill in muscles, uh, details, clothing, anything you can think of in this last step. It's always helpful to have references when drawing in these details, so don't shy away from using them. You know, things like an anatomy book or 3D models, anything to help you get the body right. After all, this is not cheating, it's just doing your research. Like I said earlier, there are a ton of things that can help you out with inventing new poses or artworks, and if you want to see more videos about this topic, you can go ahead and subscribe, so you don't miss when I upload more videos about it. If you want to get better at drawing hands, or maybe anatomy in general, or perspective, and many other things, well, just check out my other tutorials. Here are two on screen, just click them if you're interested. Also, thank you not only to Skillshare for sponsoring this video, but also you guys for helping me out on Patreon. I honestly appreciate it. Well then, my name is Marcel and I'll see you guys on my next video. Goodbye.